Hello and welcome fellow Raiders. This is Brandon here, aka B-Hub, ready to bring you the next Raid Shadow Legends video. Today it's all going to be about what are some of the tips and tricks that I wish I had known whenever I first started the game. The things that can help you maybe progress and get the most out of your game. I want to hop right into this video. I want to go through it as quickly as possible so you can have as much time to get back to the game. So one of the first things that I think uh, I find the most important is your energy. Obviously you only have a certain amount of energy and it takes time to replenish your energy. Now when you first start the game it gives you a ton of energy and all these opportunities to refill and to go well over whatever maximum energy capacity that you have. Now there's a temptation I think to just constantly keep hundreds of energy on hand. But here's what you should do. What you want to do is you want to get your energy down to zero as much as possible and let it naturally refill. Which means, for an example, when you go to bed at night, you want your energy to be as close to zero as possible so that you get a free hundred plus energy by the time that you wake up. This is just free energy. If you keep it over your maximum, then you're never getting any free energy, right? Now it might take some time for you to actually get down because the game dumps a ton of energy on you at the beginning. But once you have the opportunity to actually go down below your your maximum, that's what you want to do. You want to keep it as close to zero as possible so that you can always be replenishing new and free energy. Now the second thing is very similar. It's your arena tokens, right? Now arena is not my highest priority in the game. It's probably my last priority in the game, but it's still important because great hall bonuses do help. Now with that being said, you want to you want to try and use all of your tokens every single day. They're free opportunities to try and win and you can experiment more and get better at arena as you go on. But you want to use all of your free opportunities and again the same thing with these you want them to just naturally refill now a quick note about this during every day you have an opportunity if you play the three hours here you get the arena bag which gives you 10 free token refills and for your regular quests if you purchase an item at the store you get a free coin that gives you five additional tokens now watch this as i go to arena currently i have no I have no tokens and I click battle and it'll give me the opportunity, do I want to restore because I have one of these bags in my inventory. So I can use this and it'll let me know, it'll say confirm for free. Now if I did not have a bag, it would say purchase for 40 gems. Here's the thing, it will notify you if you have one of the full bag refills, but it will not notify you if you only, if you have the coin. For the coin, you have to go into your inventory and get the coin out yourself. But it's five free additional attacks that you'll be able to make in Arena and try and get some medals. This is really important. It's going to just give you the, maybe a little bit of boost that you need. But it's always important. We want to use all of our resources every day and let them replenish naturally. And then when we have the opportunity to get our free energy, we use that on a time when we're going to have a lot of time to play. Ideally, you want to know the time that you have available. And for instance, if you're going to be able to play for an hour and then you're going to be unavailable for the next four hours, you want to get as close to zero as you can by the end of your hour so that for those four hours you're unavailable, your energy is just refilling naturally because energy is one of the most valuable resources in this game. Now with that being said, we're going to move on to some other things. What about the stuff that's just right here on my screen? The gym mine. The gym mine is wonderful. You're going to want to get this. If you plan on playing for longer than a month, you want to go ahead and upgrade your gym mine fully. It will pay for itself and then eventually it's just free gems. Yes, go for it. For the market, you're going to want to upgrade all every single one of these slots as quickly as possible. And when you're in the market, things you're going to be looking to buy. You want to buy all the mystery shards because they're only 5,000 silver. That's nothing. You want to find any five star, I would really only buy five star really good gear and we'll go over some of that good gear here a little bit later. And then once you get higher up and you have more silver to spend, I always purchase these. I always purchase my uh, two star heroes that's just free food. Go for it. Now what about the sparring pit? There's some mixed feelings on the sparring pit, but here's mine. I use mine, mine is upgraded, I use it every day. If you are planning on playing the game for any link for an extended period of time, if this is something that you can see yourself doing for a while, go ahead and upgrade your spar pit. I use mine, I have no regrets, no disappointments in it. I think it's fine. 
All right, so next, what do we spend our gems on? We have gems, what do we actually want to spend them on? Realistically, uh, energy is gonna be the most important thing. You want to just be able to use and buy energy refills with your gems. Some people use it to try and go to the shop and buy the blue shard packs and things like that, which I've done a couple of times, but realistically, I think the best thing that you can do is use energy, almost exclusively energy, especially if you are free to play. If you're willing to spend money on the game, it really doesn't matter because you can just buy whatever you'd like. But if you want to, if you want to be free to play, you're gonna use these gems for almost exclusively energy refills. That's really important. Don't waste your gems on other things. <clears throat> One of the next things I want to go into is as you're progressing through the game, what about the end like what about the gear that people use once we get to the end of the game, right? The highest level content. Because you don't want to throw away gear that you might need later on and you also you also don't want you don't want to spend a lot of time farming the wrong gear. So I want to show you kind of what I use on my end game heroes to let you see kind of what it is you're digging for. Now for clan boss, <clears throat> every single one of the people that I use in clan boss are filled with life steal gear and usually speed. Life steal gear, speed. Tyrell's a little bit different. He's life steal defense because that's kind of what he does. Aethel, life steal speed and blind seer is only different because one of her things really works off of her hp so she has this regeneration gear now this is really important so for the end game stuff when you're fighting clan boss what you want on clan boss is not high attack damage you want high survivability the more rounds you last the better so i always use a combination of hp percentage and defense is usually but she probably has two hp percentages on her she does but for most of my other characters, it's HP percent and it's defense. So that's something that you want to keep an eye out for, HP percentage and defense on your five-star items. That's really important. That's what's going to help you survive in this game longer. Also for your substats, you want stuff like HP percent or defense. Now for your boots, on every single character that you bring to Clan Boss, you want speed on your boots. So you are looking for that. Realistically, if you get any five-star speed item for boots, just keep them. Just keep anything that's five-star and is boots and has speed. That's awesome. Just keep it. But that's what you're looking for in the clan boss. Uh, just to kind of give you a heads up, like for me, I used Verask for a long time, who, by the way, is also just in full speed gear. But I used Verask for a long time on clan boss. He's probably the second best healer in the game, only parallel to uh, uh, Bad L who is a legendary healer. Uh, and, and here's the thing I found is that his healing, I actually did less damage than when I just use a team that is a five team with all lifesteal gear. So that is gonna be where you want to be at. Now as far as my arena and my farming, my seeker uses all speed because that is exactly how you need to make a seeker, just all speed. Uh, my skull crusher, my skull crown, sorry, is used in farming and in my arena team. And look at this, okay? There's two pieces of crit damage set, two attack, and two crit rate. And my one of my other people I use in arena is is this. It's got two crit rate, two attack, and this is the cruel set, which is attack plus ignore defense. It's kind of the higher level stuff that you get from clan boss. But with that being said, look, I only have two characters that I actually put in with attack and crit rate. Which, what I'm saying, for me, for my end game, the stuff that I use every day, where do I need to be getting my gear from? Well, at first you kind of have to do whatever you have to do, right? To be able to just progress through the game. Which means you might have to farm Ice Crown Golem, you might have to do Dragon, you might have to do whatever just to get your characters up and leveled. But what am I ideally looking for? Man, when I go to Ice Crown Golem or whatever, I, I'm only really trying to get a couple of different pieces because I really only have two characters that I use that use that kind of gear. And then honestly for Fire Knight, uh, I only have two pieces of crit damage that's used. None of, the, none of this other gear that I use on a regular basis comes from Fire Knight's castle. Only two pieces that I actually use. Mostly everything that I use comes from dragon whether it's speed 
the life steal. It all comes from Dragon. Uh, this guy that I use, uh, he has a little bit of life and a lot of accuracy just because he steals buffs. Uh, but accuracy gear is also something that you might need going forward because accuracy helps you land your debuffs on clan boss and on other heroes and things like that. But accuracy, speed, life steal all come from dragon. So where do you need to spend most of your time farming your gear? Dragon. You don't need to spend a lot of time, I would, in my estimation, on Fire Knight's Castle. You don't need to spend a lot of time on Ice Golem's Peak, only to get the pieces that you need, maybe for your farmer. Now here's the thing, if you don't have an AoE farmer like I do, which is a high crit rate, high crit damage build that just AoEs the whole thing down. Like for instance, before I used to use Tyrell to do my farming, and when I did that, this is exactly what his gear looked like. He still can farm in this gear, it's just lifesteal and some defense stuff. What does that mean? Like I said, realistically, Dragon is where you're going to spend most of your time, and the gear that you're looking for at the end of the game is going to be speed and lifesteal primarily. Now, what do you want on your substats? You want speed. If you get any piece of gear that has speed on it, you can keep it. It's usually a pretty decent a pretty decent thing. Uh, and again, for the end game, for your survivability and things like that, you're looking for things that have uh, defense percentage, HP percentage, accuracy is really good because you have to have high accuracy to be able to land your debuffs on clan boss. But that's really what you're looking for. So don't spend a lot of time grinding these other dungeons where you don't really need to be in because you only might need a couple of pieces of gear. Now this is just my play style and kind of how I do that, but go for it. Uh, another thing that I would tell you is that for your crit rate, crit damage builds, you're going to want, ideally, you're going to want gloves that have crit damage as their primary stat. It gives you a 65% crit damage boost. That's really high. It really helps you get your damage up. It really helps in farming. So that means you're going to want to get your crit rate from other places, which is why she doesn't even have 100% crit rate on her. She's, what, 87? So she crits most of the time but I value the crit damage over having a higher crit rate so go for that those are kind of the things that you're looking for so for instance for my seeker again I have speed gear and that speed gear is gonna have speed stats wherever I can get those speed stats and additionally on them that's really one of the things that you're gonna be looking for and that speed is really key all right, so that is probably most of the things I can think of right now that I really wish I had known in the beginning to try and help you not waste a lot of time in other areas. Make sure your energy is always replenishing. Make sure your tokens are always replenishing. Get as much from your time in the game as you possibly can. And thank you guys so much for watching. I'm going to come out with some other videos soon, and I just hope that you guys keep watching. Now, remember, hit that subscribe button and hit that notification bell. I really appreciate it. Thank you.